and uh, having experience of almost 22 years of uh, teaching so professor mustafa's cv is like a phd thesis so in fact it's very difficult uh, uh, to say all those things uh, and i requested professor mustafa to send me a brief cv uh, so just i am reading that brief cv uh, in fact uh, professor mustafa has been a very good student and uh, throughout he has been gold medalist and he has won a lot of medal he has been rank holder and in fact the most unique thing about professor mustafa is that uh, he has been a student of zoology so he is msc in zoology then he did msc in psychology and then he did ma in sociology uh, so in fact a true multidisciplinary professor in nature and phd in education so that makes professor mustafa a very unique person uh, and in fact he understand the things uh, in a very clear way and he is a very passionate researcher in fact few of uh, his phd thesis uh, in fact i have evaluated and i have found that all the research work have been very nice uh, so uh, besides that in fact besides being a good teacher besides being a uh, uh, good researcher in fact he ha he is serving central university of kerala in many capacities uh, like uh, he has been the coordinator national resource center of central university of kerala he has been director uh, internal quality assurance cell he has been the director center for life skills of education central university of kerala and uh, besides that he has been former director school of distance education university of calicut he has also been the, the director university grants commission academic staff college now now which is known as hrdc and uh, uh, professor mustafa in fact uh, guided 12 phd thesis he has written 70 research paper he has uh, uh, participated in more than 75 conferences and seminars and almost he has delivered 1000 lecture uh, so far as teacher training uh, are concerned uh, so uh, he, he is invited as a resource person in almost all the academic staff colleges of the country that's unique with him uh, so definitely it's a very huge cv uh, just i am uh, i'm finishing it and i hope Uh, in, uh, in fact interaction with professor mustafa will be very fruitful to you uh, in fact the moment uh, i thought that uh, we the teachers should understand the process of value inculcation because unless and until we will understand process of value inculcation we will never be able to inculcate values among our students so immediately uh, idea came to mind that why not to invite professor mustafa because he is having the Uh, background of psychology in fact he will be the most suitable person uh, to let us understand the process of value inculcation uh, so yeah, with this in fact i am finishing and i am handing over to professor mustafa professor mustafa it's over to you sir thank you very much 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 i request uh, all the participants to mute their uh, mic Uh, because uh, some some disturbances, I don't know from the. So very good morning to you and all. Respected uh, director, UGC HRDC, and respected coordinator of the program, learned professors across the country. for attending this our uh, program so first of all uh, greetings from central university of kerala and uh, hope that uh, you are all in safe and uh, health wise and may we be able to so recover the same kind of regular which we had enjoyed privileged by the almighty some uh, eight months before so i extend my sincere gratitude to the hrdc director and the coordinator for giving me an opportunity for interacting with this uh, learned community across the country so so before uh, moving to the details the modus operandi of uh, my interaction with you today is uh, we will have a one hour discussion on the 
mechanism or the process of uh, value inculcation emphasizing on the psychological perspective and from that uh, see understanding that psychological perspective how you will be, be able to we will be able to inculcate values as teachers as parents and uh, what is the real conceptualization uh, in the perspective of a child related to that so i don't want to make any elaborate note on what are the different strategies of value education how you can do that no that is not my uh, part because so we are all inculcating values uh, for uh, as a teacher as a parent or uh, as a social activist or uh, something like that it goes on so my intention is to sensitize the psychological process behind value inculcation so that a teacher as a parent or as a see a designer of curriculum we will be able to redefine the way how we are see involving in the process of uh, giving a value orientation to our teachers or our students so i have a presentation Uh, i'll be uh, sharing that presentation with you fine this one so are you able to see the screen no sir no sir no sir no 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 why not even not now no sir one no sir about now what about now not yet no sir no sir so you are presenting but the ppt is not sharing but the here it shows you you are presenting the ppt is not sharing sir you are sharing sharing your screen but no. it is not sharing
通かな。एनवायरमेंटल के पार्टिसिपेंट को ह्यूमन राइट का सिचुएशन लेटर भेज गया और मतलब एनवायरमेंटल वालों को वोमेन स्टडी के पहुंचे कम से कम क्या चीज सिलेक्शन लेटर सिलेक्शन लेटर उन्हें पहुंच गया मान लीजिए आपने अप्लाई किया तो बहुत बड़ी मिस्टेक है ना ये ये कोई छोटी मिस्टेक नहीं है कल मैंने कह दिया परसों मैंने कहा सर वो क्या है मैंने कहा कम से कम पचास लोगों के फोन मुझे आए कि हमें गलत कोर्स का जो आ गया है जबकि हमारे पास सिलेक्शन है ये क्या तरीका है मेरे को समझ में नहीं आया आपका भाई जब डिजिटल लिस्ट बन रही है तो डिजिटल लिस्ट जो फॉर्म में भरा है वही डिजिटल लिस्ट में होगा उसी से सर्टिफिकेट बनना है अब इन अकलम ने क्या किया लोहा घाट जगह है उत्तराखंड में दिया भाई इन्होंने आसाम अपने आप में दिया तो आसाम तो आया सर्टिफिकेट सही कह आप क्रेडिट मदर साहब को अल्लाह का समझा रहा हूँ नहीं बोला आपको भी लिया था साथ में मैंने मैंने कहा सर हम दो लोग जो अलग हैं मैंने क्लियर कर दिया मैं क्या बिल्कुल क्रेडिट मत दीजिए आप हमें क्रेडिट की जरूरत नहीं है हमें तमका नहीं चाहिए सर लेकिन गलत तमका भी नहीं ले सकते आप क्रेडिट एक आदमी को दे बिल्कुल दे चुप हो गए सब ये तरीका समझ में नहीं आया मैं आप स्ट्रेस बढ़ा रहे हैं माइंड में बताइए रात रात में आदमी काम कर रहा है सुबह आठ बजे मैं और जिया भाई यहाँ पौने आठ पर खड़े थे अटेंडेंट आपका मौजूद भी था और हम लोग यहाँ मौजूद थे कल मैंने देखे आप काफी आए इसके शॉर्ट टर्म आते ही सबसे पहले यही निपटा है मैंने पहले इसी फजी थे वो खत्म हो कल खत्म हो रहा है परसों ही तो है रिलीविंग भी इनकी परसों ही देंगे बंद कर रखी थी रिलीविंग को मैंने जो रिलीविंग लेटर है सर्टिफिकेट के साथ ही देंगे बंद कर दिया उसको मैंने लेकिन थैंक्स के आने लगे काफी लोग गए बीस पच्चीस कुछ लोगों ने फोन करके पता है और है नहीं क्या आपकी अब देखिए कितना इजी तरीका था ये वाला ठीक है आए आकर व्हाट्सएप पे आ गया कनेक्शन हो गया ये भाई सुनिए भेजा पालन हो गए जो करेक्शन के हो गया खत्म हेलो भाई साहब ने नया इजाज कर दिया जैसा वो गूगल क्लास यस सर आ गया सर नाउ इट्स विजिबल सर सर इट इज विजिबल सॉरी 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 अरे एक नया गूगल कर दिया बेटा कमेंट में दे दीजिए उस लिस्ट में बना कर दे दीजिए सर लिस्ट में और का बनने की बात है अब हमने भी कुछ नहीं कहा बट ठीक है सर जो ये कह रहे हैं वैसे करिए हमने तो सो करेक्ट यही लिख रखा है जो विच रिप्रेजेंट द नेस्टिंग बिहेवियर ऑफ वंडरफुल वेरी ब्यूटिफुल बर्ड बाया वी वर बैट एंड इट इट इज इन फैक्ट द वंडरफुल आर्किटेक्ट द बर्ड विच कैन अवल टू विच नेस्ट इन ए वेरी मेटिकुलस वे एंड इफ यू ऑब्सर्व द नेस्टिंग बिहेवियर ऑफ बाया वी वर बर्ड 
अबर्ड इमीडिएटली फ्यू फ्यू डेज आफ्टर हैचिंग आउट फ्रॉम द एक द यंग वन ऑफ दिस फिलोसियस इज एबल टू एक्सेक्यूट द नेस्टिंग बिहेवियर इन द सेम वे एस द अडल्ट सो इज द केस ऑफ a fish named the salmon related to the migration immediately after hatching out from the egg it could able to execute pehle to khud hi galat kar rahe hain behavior in a wonderful manner director ne uske signal diya and so is the case of uh, any species other than homo sapiens but in the case of human being immediately after birth the human creature is a helpless entity on few only few reflexes only few reflexes like uh, this uh, uh closing and opening of eyelashes and cry then simple reflect you know main main baat kar lu these are all uh, these are only the behaviors that a human infant can uh, manipulate or execute at the time of birth immediately after birth and you can see a wonderful process and wonderful discrimination attribute which we homo sapiens and all other uh, human uh, all other species of the universe thousands of bird nest constructed by or built by by a river bird is it look like uh, somewhat similar or the same chat but human at the time of birth birth a helpless entity but nature has uh, given a prolonged childhood days period as far as the human can say so before becoming an adult this human being uh, the same architect who uh, designed your house the same architect who designed your uh, cousin's house the same architect may be designed your in-laws house but all these houses are designed in a in a different 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 pattern so here lies the very significant attribute or trait that discriminate human from all other species none other than religiosity so uh, why i am telling this is the basic difference between the development of a human from all other animal is that you all other animals or, or in all other species it is mainly governed or predominantly by instinct behavior but in human though there are instinct behavior which is executed uh, apparently in the form of uh, certain reflexes but human development is facilitated by learning and more specifically it is uh, learning learning through uh, learning through interaction so the the learning through interaction is some notification so so learning through interaction so uh, this is learning through social interaction uh, this prolonged childhood periods from zero to from the birth to 18 years of uh, a period moving from infancy to babyhood then early childhood 
from uh, two to six years, then uh, later childhood, pre-adolescent period, then adolescent period, then post-adolescent period, then moving to the adult transformation period. So 18 years of a long span of childhood days as far as human concern. And here, uh, this uh, so development is uh, manifested by interaction between the uh, interaction of the individual with the society. And it is the interaction process that make the uh, human to a somewhat, see, uh, with all the, the ability to adapt with the environment and the ability to change the environment, the ability to manifest the environmental input and ability to move uh, uh, his uh, ontological as well as the uh, social or phylogenic development. So both the ontological and phylogenic development of the individual is mainly uh, facilitated by social learning or social learning through social interaction. And this is the cardinal basis uh, or psychological basis which can be utilized for value inculcation among the students. Uh, so value means, so now coming to a, the conceptual clarity of a value. Value means primarily to price, to esteem, to appraise and to estimate. It means the act of achieving something, holding it, and also the act of passing judgment upon the nature and amount of values as compared with something else. So a value become, it is something to be cherished, worth enough to be cherished, that is value. It may be, it may be an object. So we may attribute value to an object. The very important, uh, uh, see, concept a very valuable concept is time. So, uh, see, for, for us, uh, uh, that uh, time may be very valuable. Then uh, for another person, that is different. So, uh, a value becomes value unless and until uh, we are attributing to uh, that, that entity or that concept we are attributing, we are primarily pricing or taking, appraising and estimating it as something to be cherished. So uh, in the educational or in the psychosocial perspective of life, the role of value is something like a uh, ring and it, it, it uh, gives uh, the track or it cement or it uh, cement and propel the journey of life in a in a very meaningful manner as the role of a way for a moving train the role of value comes to our life as human being so human being is a web of relationship our society is a web of relationship Though in the current scenario, we are not able to have a social interaction, keeping the keeping in a closed proximity uh, because of the pandemic. But the base of human life rely on the fact that uh, human is uh, mainly uh, it interactive uh, in nature, and social interaction is the very important aspect of human life. So all the educational process enable the individual. See, from an animalistic individual, uh, the education process it is converting to a humanistic individual. From a hedonistic man, uh, the the education process convert the human being to a he egoistic individual. Hedonistic means in the sense that it is a pleasure-seeking behavior. At the time of birth and in the uh, childhood days, the human tendency is a uh, pleasure-seeking. So from there, 
uh, we, as a result of uh, interaction with the environment, as a result of the interaction with the society, as the track fixed by the rail of values, uh, the human individual is able to sacrifice the pleasure for the sake of uh, one's esteem or for the sake of others. So, so in this process of socialization, it is, that is the fundamental aim of education and uh, how this socialization, the education process or education mechanism enabled the socialization is in tuning the web of relationship, uh, the varied relationship in a, in a synchronized manner. Education process uh, helps to maintain the relationship because society is uh, nothing but my children and your children are playing with our children. It is a verb of a relationship you can. So the way how we, we are able to see, optimize and move with the relationship without much conflict as far as the social norms are concerned, uh, it uh, gives a guarantee that the individual is developed in a wholesome manner in tune with the society and in tune with the expectations of the society. Here lies the significance of uh, uh, value. So value uh, is nothing but learning about self and wisdom of life. This is the concept of John Dewey as uh, his interpretation uh, explanation on value. It is nothing but learning about self and wisdom of life. So wisdom of applying that uh, learning in the uh, life process. So uh, now, uh, if you go through uh, the literature, uh, we can see that values are the foundations of a person's ability to judge between right and wrong. So, uh, I am concentrating on the mechanism of value inculcation rather than making a, a total uh, description or explanation on the different values, different types of values and uh, how it can be promoted through different approaches. No, I think that uh, a session will be following on this uh, uh, related to the different perspectives, the different strategies. So my intention is to have a psychological perspective so, and sociological perspectives. Values are the foundation of a person's ability to judge between right and wrong. So uh, for automatically a question arises. My right to wrong concept will be different from uh, another person's. You, you, you are having a very different concept of uh, uh, see, uh, right and wrong, and uh, myself uh, having a different concept of uh, uh, right and wrong. So, uh, there, uh, what is uh, really a right to me may not be a right to you. So, how how will you able to uh, judge in that occasion? So, uh, here lies the the uh, the significance of. Uh, uh, social norms or uh, taboos of the society. So values in that sense, it is uh, included as a deep-rooted system of belief. So values, uh, that is applicable to a particular society may not be uh, applicable to or accepted to another society. Uh, and uh, these values have uh, intrinsic work but are not universally accepted. Values accepted to our society may not be acceptable in a universal manner because uh, it, it is uh, entangled, entwined with the life system, the, the way how we are pursuing, the, the way the culture, then uh, see our living system, the demographic factors, the geography factors, etc. This system, this value system allows each individual to determine what should and what should not be. So uh, now, uh, 
Uh, now uh, it is uh, uh, very good to have a, a clear discrimination between three three concepts. So one we already uh, see uh, what is meant by values. Then uh, another concept is called uh, morals. So morals are the action system of uh, beliefs that emerge out of a person's core values. So values are, uh, it is the, if you, uh, uh, if you observe a, an ocean, the foresee, the unforeseen, which is uh, beyond our, behind, uh, beyond our visibility is the value system. But the effect of that uh, invisible ocean, which is expressed in the, uh, as, the actual system of belief that is uh, morals, then it is uh, the specific and context-driven rules that governs a person's behavior. This system of beliefs uh, is individually tailored to a person's life experience, which is subject to proof, opinion. And uh, the, th the third concept uh, is ethics. Ethics are the vehicle to our morals. So ethics, it may be morals in, in action, I can say. Ethics enact that system we have developed in our moral court. Someone will behave ethically or unethically. So these three entities are very much related. Uh, so as a teacher, as an educationist, as a parent, as a social engineer, so uh, we may be concentrating on the uh, the apparent aspect. So, uh, but it will be effective if we could able to, if a person uh, could be able to see work in the in the unseen part of the personality. If that unseen part is okay, the manifestation or the visible or the apparent part or the regulatory mechanism of the behavior of the individual will be wrong. So uh, these, these terms, morals, uh, as, I, uh, as I told, uh, is, uh, it, is the, it is the regulatory manifested part. Uh, so when, if you compare uh, the, non, uh, the values as an unforeseen, the peripheral surface, it, it is uh, uh, the morals, and the regulatory uh, chariot is the ethics system of the uh, individual. So, as a child reach adolescent stage, the members of the social group expect them to behave in accordance with the mores of the social groups. So, society has made some some expectations as far as the uh, individual concept. It is the, this expectation that propels the uh, social life in a meaningful manner. So it is for uh, a fulfilling or providing opportunity uh, to uh, tune the life of an individual uh, so as to accomplish this uh, uh, expectation the existence of school or educational institutions are justified because each society has asked an important question. Uh, the question is nothing but why school? So up to six years or up to seven years of life, a home is the, now it is the, as per the national education policy, it is three years. So anyway, anyway, the first institution or educational agency informally is the family and the society realized that family is not much enough or competent in all ways uh, so as to uh, tailor so as to transfer and transform the the person into an uh, adult adult see citizen who can contribute uh, with his capacity to the to the society, to the individual life, and to the uh, society? 
so uh, so at this juncture there lies the significance of uh, uh, institutionalized mechanism for uh, uh, shaping the behavior of an individual in conformity with the moral code of the social group so that is why the reason for educational institution uh, then uh, you see so if you, if you go through the uh, trajectory of the development of an individual uh, you can see that at the time of uh, birth uh, the individual is uh, unmoral or morally neutral then it it takes a way of uh, uh, interaction with the society the child realizes what is right and what is wrong then a uh, become uh, so at the time of birth uh, he or she is morally neutral then uh, another concept came it, it grows to a uh, moral behavior then uh, the uh, moral behavior uh, the, that concept moral and immoral comes but uh, uh, as the interaction of the individual with the society takes place as i told in by just a few minutes society is a web of a relationship all the nurturing and uh, uh, behavior of individual and different aspects of the social life system will be having a room in the life of the individual in the society uh, since all individuals are not living in an isolation uh, the individual is uh, living or lead led their life by interaction with every factors of the social system it is a fact that any element positive or negative a uh, positive or negative is having a wide implications a wide implications uh, in the development of a individual so hence hence it is quite obvious that uh, there is a chance for uh, the individual to become uh, immoral so uh, it is uh, that chance uh, the, through the positive uh, giving through uh, the positive environment through education we are uh, providing uh, providing uh, the the correcting uh, the educational system work as a correcting mechanism as far as the child is concerned so it is a two shield process what is a two shield process the uh, it, it, it is a two shield process in the sense that uh, the educational institution of the social system has to ensure that the society is providing positive moral uh, see values uh, or experiences as far as the child is concerned and the second shield is of uh, the society uh, the, the educational institution or the, inst the education the process of education which uh, the individual derives from a family informally or uh, formally from educational institution non formally from uh, uh, see other manifold contact with the other agencies of the society that experience yeah, it should make sure that uh, that experience act as a corrective mechanism for the uh, individual so the, the this is the way how uh, how with uh, the inculcation of the values in the uh, students uh, must uh, take place and the role of the education as a process of uh, uh, as a dynamic process of uh, ensuring the upward movement of the society the, uh, it depends upon how much the society will be able to execute uh, as a corrective mechanism for the nurturant uh, behavior or the element negative element that might have infused to the individual's life as a result of uh, interaction in an informal manner with the social elements so that filtering out and acting as a acting as a uh, see, uh, acting as a shield 
for a filter and acting as a filter for the uh, prevention of the uh, negative behavior negative behavior which may be uh, infusing to the uh, minds of the learner and minds of the individual and later become a uh, part and parcel of the personality that is the one and second rod are providing a milieu of experiences a milieu of experiences where the child is vicariously uh, the child is spontaneously uh, assimilate that positive behavior so uh, this is the role of uh, educational institution theoretically speaking and that is why each generation has uh, came into uh, establish educational institution for the smooth uh, see propulsion of the uh, the generation and for transforming and transferring the values cherished by the present generation to the future generation so uh, now uh, let us examine the conceptualization of uh, values in different perspectives if you go through the uh, the philosophical perspective if you are analyzing uh, through a philosophical lens you can see that values are standards or a code or a moral behavior to cherish the ideals of life and if it is, if it is analyzed or visualized through a psychological perspectives it is uh, falls under the affective domain so uh, the mechanism behind uh, uh, the value inculcation is mainly concentrated on the uh, psychological um, perspective but to remember without a strong philosophical footing a uh, footing the psychological perspective or the psychological manifestations will be a blend so uh, therefore the psychological and sociological perspective lies on the philosophy of the system why because in in, in indian indian tradition the the, uh, the values of the indian tradition satchitananda 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 truth goodness and beauty so uh, in in the american system uh, there is uh, no such ultimate truth ultimate values values are instrumental changing from time to time changing from person to person changing from context to context so uh, my my attempt is to justify that it is the philosophical concept of values which form the base for the value inculcation process and uh, uh, this value inculcation process it it lies the a uh, cognitive uh, pillar or standard of the entire mechanism and from this mechanism uh, these workings comes that is base and means see this should be mainly concentrated or focused on the affective domains of the uh, individual and uh, because because uh, it uh, there is this three uh, emotion is uh intellect is so intellect is only a spot in the great ocean of emotion so human beings are emotionally driven so our attempt to reinforce our attempt to establish our attempt to fix uh, the values among the uh, learner among the students among the future generation and among the society Uh, it must be focused on the affective domains rather than the cognitive domains so but uh, uh, as a teacher as a teacher of a say for example a teacher in the primary sector a biology teacher who is dealing with the blood the topic is blood so uh, the blood different components rbc dpc plasma and different constituent this apple description uh, has given by the teacher but if the teacher to able to internalize the hidden curriculum hidden curriculum in the sense that it is not it is not revealed but it is the 
duty and responsibility of the teacher to to see dig out the value elements of the uh, curriculum and to project and highlight the uh, value elements and uh, see spurt and give a spurting in the minds of the learner minds of the learner so as a teacher of uh, uh, discipline any discipline there is a scope for value inculcation say as an illustration this biology teacher takes the core value that it is a, a very important duty responsibility of every citizen is blood donation so in the curriculum it is not uh, it may not be there uh, it is revealed as the structure of blood the different components of blood properties of the blood functions of the blood yes it may be there in that particular topic so obvious there may be another topic blood uh, donation will be there so uh, see more than the concept of that uh, blood the donation if the teacher is able to spurt the value that blood donation is a great great uh, see uh, see uh, great aspect and uh, virtue that uh, an individual can do for others so uh, this when it take it as a uh, cognitive level it stops for a question answer uh, the uh, and the different kinds of uh, group etc etc but it when it take to the affective domain the waves of that spurting will remain remain for ever and uh, in the language of pedagogy it is treated as uh, uh, lor lors in the, in the, the outcome based learning it this type of categories are treated as lors or uh, long range outcome of learning so the the uh, the outward expression of uh, this uh, basic spurting that a child that a teacher puts uh, will be uh, expressed after a long period of time but, uh, if uh, we as a teachers we are really treating it in the affective domain it is quite sure that the curve will be spread out and the result will be there and if you are taking the in the uh, sociological perspective it is depending upon the right and uh, important uh, for what is important and what is right for the society so it 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 is decided by the society it depends upon the time the context the uh, the nature the value the, the belief or uh, or so many aspects that is uh, uh there in a particular society that may not be there in the other society so from society to uh, society the sociological perspective that is uh, the the concept of right and wrong uh, may be very so this is uh, the three philosophical psychological and sociological uh, perspective then coming to the ca uh, uh, classification of values Uh, here, uh, uh, values are classified uh, generally in a three-mode way, in a three-tier approach. So it it may be biological values, then uh, intrinsic values, then uh, instrumental values. So uh, as pedagogues or as teachers, uh, we can come across uh, with all these kind of uh, values. Sometimes you have to enforce instrumental values. So, where utility is the guiding principle. So, sometimes uh, intrinsic values. Intrinsic values are reflected in idealism. Idealism is the concept. As uh, you are familiar to uh, this uh, concept of uh, philosophy, where ideas rules the uh, rules the world. and ideas are the uh, really real and ideas are uh, original and uh, all the product formed from the uh, origin uh, the idea the original ideas it can be perished but ideas may not 
perished and it is original, the only ontological entity that is having an existence is idea. That is the basic tenets of uh, um, idealism. So, uh, idealism, intrinsic values, it is, that is, uh, the, say, say for example, the concept of uh, uh, God, the concept of uh, truth, the concept of eternal truth, the concept of uh, uh, eternal values. So, uh, here, uh, then in the third category, it is uh, everything as that is desired is uh, desirable. Uh, everything that is desired is desirable. That is the biological concept. It depends upon the uh, treating the human being as a biological entity. And instrumental values, uh, it is of uh, pragmatic is in nature, where the slogan of uh, determining the value of, of a judging the value of an idea or an uh, or a, uh, uh, an object is mainly concerned to the utility aspect of the, uh, that object. So, uh, if you go through, uh, uh, following this, if you go through the different uh, types of values, you can have an uh, arbitrary cla uh, classification on the different types of values like this, maybe personal values, social values, moral values, spiritual values, then uh, behavioral values, and uh, material uh, values are there. No need of uh, any elaborate discussion on this. So, how it is learned? At birth, no child has a conscience or a scale of values. Thus, every newborn is unmoral, neutrally moral. Every child should be taught in the good standard of right and wrong. So, according to the veteran uh, developmental psychologist, in learning to be moral, there are four essential elements. So, uh, the first one is learning what the social view expects of its members as spelled out in laws, customs and rules. This is the first thing. That is, the rules and laws set by the society serve as a guideline for children behavior. So the child's behavior, uh, it, it, uh, what are the yardstick, what are the reference material for the uh, child's uh, behavior in each society. In a tribal society, the tribal community of a particular tribe has set up a, uh, some kind of uh, values. In uh, uh, the society, Indian society, uh, or in, uh, in any kind of society, well, uh, you are living as a member of the society. Uh, uh, see, we have certain established norms or codes or spelled out in laws, customs and rules. So these are not uh, written, but it is practice. These laws are practiced and followed from generation to generation. So that is the first exposing the individual to the to the social group or the customs and rules. Then uh, the next is role of conscience. The conscience is the awareness within oneself of the choice one ought to make between right and wrong. It has an internal control over individual's behavior. No child is born, but they, they may be they must be taught what is right and uh, wrong. And as they grow, the conscience also develops through the right path. So it is also called the inner light or super ego and internalized policeman, I put it in uh, inverted form. So uh, that, that process is, uh, so, uh, that process is done by parenting naturally. And uh, after that, the role of this, uh, this Conscience process is taken by the educational institution. And the third step, according to Elizabeth Haller, it is the role of guilt and shame. So a child is exposed to the role of guilt and shame. After children develop a conscience, they carry it with them and use it as a guideline for their behavior. So uh, uh, they use it as a 
guideline for their behavior if their behavior does not come up to the standard set by their conscience they feel guilty and ashamed so i repeat uh, the first and primary concern uh, if you analyze the psychological pathway of uh, uh, value development it is exposing the children towards the code and contact then uh, enabling to the child to develop an inner insight regarding them so the uh, regarding uh, his or her behavior then uh, there uh, the the child to provide the child an opportunity for uh, it is a self voluntary process the child will be the child will be judging uh, they carry it within them and use it as a guideline for their behavior that inner insight is there and that the thoughts in the thoughts will be there then they in a natural way in a voluntary way uh, they will judge their behavior in accordance with the uh, inner uh, insight or thoughts they are carry if their behavior does not come up to the standard set by their conscience they feel guilty and ashamed if they feel no guilty uh, it will have little motivation to learn what the social group expected of them. so if there is no guilty uh, behavior as far as the guilty feeling as far as the children concerned the child uh, goes uh with that type of a behavior say for example so respect for elders respect for elders if a form fails to develop such type of a inner insight in the minds of the children by adopting a decorum by adopting a way of practice and if that inner consciousness is not developed so uh, it the child as uh, testing with the guilty and the shame feeling guilt and shame feeling the the child may not develop any kind of uh, uh, further uh, uh, see a uh, guilty feeling on see checking or verifying his behavior in accordance with that uh, type of behavior respecting the uh, elders respecting the uh, elders which is not having a strong footing derived as a result of the exposure that a child uh, children having in the family so that exposure is very important that exposure let the child need to develop an inner insight it is through the inner insight the uh, child uh, execute a verification process related to the behavior it is a judgment process in that judgment process if the child is not feeling guilty or not obeying that kind of a behavior this uh, behavior this immoral behavior will tend to uh, sustain and no question of a correction mechanism then the role of uh, social interaction as the fourth hartlock says uh, role of uh, social interaction social interaction has an important role in moral development so alien social interactions occurs within alien social interactions occurs within the family and later from neighbor to school etc children knows what socially approved behavior is to social interaction it is very simple so uh, so the steps i can sum up like this uh, enable a strong exposure to uh, a moral standard a moral code code of conduct as uh, revealed by each society then uh, develop a strong cementing uh, factors which the child later on uses an inner thoughts 
in their uh, testing, then uh, see the test, the, the individual test, the uh, judging uh, mechanism, then uh, along with that uh, uh, judging mechanism before correction or reinforcement, the child utilizes the social interaction. May I, at this center, may I ask you a, a question? See, a hypothetical question. Is there any institution which formally trained the uh, train for cigarette smoke, smoking? No, there is no, as far as my knowledge is concerned, there is no, no such uh, institution, formal training institution, which, which gives, which, which provide a, a training for cigarette smoking. But uh, the, the because of the role of social interaction and uh, the if the, there is no uh, such strong footing on the on the minds of the individual, the individual takes it as a casual. The individual goes proceed with this kind of a behavior. I am just putting an example on it. So then. Uh, my question, how can we uh, foster development of uh, values? So there are uh, two distinct phases. One is development of uh, moral behavior and development of uh, moral uh, concepts. See, development of uh, moral behavior, uh, you can have uh, direct teaching, but uh, I will come to a point later on. Uh, within few minutes, uh, then uh, the other aspect is trial and error. Trial and error mechanism is the psychological process <laughs> where the fixation of the desired behavior takes place. So, according to according to uh, the psychological perspectives of behaviorism, so all other all of, I am. Uh, see, I am uh, here and I am because of the reinforcement. What I am now is because of the reinforcement I receive. So uh, the tendency, the, the practice is that the, the practice is that the practice is that, see, um, direct uh, teaching and trial error. Sorry for some discussions. Thank you. So uh, here you can see that uh, I am uh, what I am is because of I am. Uh, uh, it is because of the reinforcement I receive. So one behavior, the social system, from the home, from the school, from the peers from the society as a large canvas, we receive a lot of uh, reinforcement. We receive a lot of reinforcement. There is a child in every adult and there is an adult in every child. And that child appeals to the world. If you touch me soft and gentle, if you look at me and smile at me, if you let me talk before you talk, I will grow and I will grow and I will grow. So it is the uh, seeking for reinforcement, seeking for recognition, seeking for applause. It is the general instinct that uh, that is there in human, every human being. As there is a statue in every rock and there is a rock in every statue. So there is a, it is the fundamental to the adult also, adult also, and hence it is applicable in anthropology also. So uh, therefore, uh, that trial and error mechanism of learning, uh, see, learning by repetition, as a result of the reinforcement correction, and uh, the child correct as a result of the uh, uh, reinforcement, and the the desired behavior is um, reinforced and uh, shaped. Then uh, children try out several patterns of behavior. 
to see if it conforms to social standard and win social approval for them. And they choose a pattern that gives a desired result. So this this choose of the behavior it changes according to the chronological sequence of the development. As the chronological sequence at par corollary with the chronological sequence of development, the, there is a change in intellectual, social, physical, emotional, moral, then uh, uh, sexual, all kinds of all patterns of uh, uh, behavior. So the child uh, execute one behavior, then uh, change that behavior on accordance with, in accordance with the approval uh, for the behavior. So this particular pattern a child is different. Say for example, so I am, uh, we are having, a, a, I am having a desire to make my uh, hairstyle, say in my childhood days, I am illustrating with an example, I mean uh, my childhood days, hippie, because I am observing the, the uh, the present uh, youth, at uh, that present youth, and it was it has been well appreciated in our adolescent community that they are heroes. So uh, I approached my uh, see see uh, the person who who used to, to come to our house and cut our tails. So the, then uh, he replied me that no no it will not work because your papa will scold you and uh, you can have later on when you become a, an adult, you can have this. That is the advice which uh, he had given to me. So, but uh, as and when uh, I myself grown up, there is no hippies. So the pattern changed. So, the, uh, see, uh, so therefore we are accepting a different kind of uh, pattern of behavior as it is in tune with or it is depending upon the approval from the society. So this, uh, uh, the once it is approved, the child imitate the pattern of behavior of others whom they admire. This is an unconscious process. So this is an unconscious uh, process. Uh, it is a voluntary uh, process where the child is observing uh, the the surrounding, the familial surrounding, the institutional surrounding, the social surrounding, and uh, the child uh, feels at man on a certain particular pattern of uh, the behavior. And the choice of this admiration is depending upon the appreciation given by the particular chronological group of the uh, individual. So, uh, in, in certain groups, uh, see uh, a person of uh, uh, a particular hairstyle, a particular behavior, a particular dress code will be appreciated. Then the child identifies uh, this, take it as a choice and uh, unconsciously identify with that type of a uh, uh, behavior. So, uh, then, uh, then now it is the process now. Uh, we can move to some uh, some techniques uh, for uh, um, developing the, the, the development of value uh, uh, behavior. And uh, just analyzing uh, this, uh, I will uh, stop and we will have the interaction. So for, uh, for the, the different uh, types of behavior uh, practices, it is one is authoritarian technique. Authoritarian techniques is the corporal punishment, and where where the uh, the authority, the authority may be a parent, the authority may be a teacher, the authority may be an institutional head, the authority uh, may be a, 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 the the rule ruler of the uh, state or anything like that. The authority imposes some kind of uh, uh, discipline. So there is no, there is no, uh, see, counter or expression of the disagreement on this, uh, uh, on this approach. Then another is called permissive disciplinary techniques. 
through creating impressions creating this in this process the the uh, we are deliberately creating some kind of uh, impressions in the minds of the uh, in the minds of the individual and uh, these impressions will be competent enough to develop uh, to make a choice as far as the child is uh, uh, unsaid then uh, uh, the child uh, uh, to take a choice then uh, test the the validity of the choice then uh, become fixing to that principle then democratic technique in the democratic technique it involves uh, explanation discussion and reasoning to help then uh, understand and uh, in in a, in, a, in a expected in a uh, in a better way so the psychologist colbert uh, says it is better to adapt democratic te technique while molding a child's uh, behavior because uh, there is say uh, the child is uh, ch children are like oil in the spring so there are a lot of uh, emotions pent up energies which is not being utilized in a proper way so if it is being utilized in a proper way in accordance to the social norms the core which we expect from a citizen so uh, provide some opportunities for expressing uh, and doing something uh, the child develop uh, the value uh, in accordance with the uh, see expectations of the society and we can uh, raise some raise some revolt uh, revolutionary questions like that uh, who are we to uh, see to raise questions to fix the norms for the uh, new born or for the next generation so that type of a revolutionary question is uh, there is no existence there is no much significance in the education process as a institution education as an institution where the process of uh, uh, shaping the process of uh, shaping uh, our future generation are uh, in tune with the expectancy of the prospective society in concern then uh, uh, one more one more uh, see uh, make a theoretical perspective related to the mechanism of value development uh, this is more applicable in the educational sector it is not uh, other than the social engineering of uh, albert bunto so as i illustrated uh, uh, before uh, related to my uh, wish of uh, having a hippie style of uh, uh, hippie hair style so uh, it is uh, in this theory it is explained that it is uh, by a two process namely observational learning and modeling uh, the behavior so the the child is observing the behavior observing in a in an unconscious way and what is that by by the uh, by his or her group uh, will be imitated and uh, it is be retained and reproduced by the individual it is be uh, the the child is having a tendency to motivate to sustain this kind of uh, behavior uh, throughout the life so hence the responsibility of the teachers and the responsibility of teacher educators and the responsibility of all those who are working in the field of uh, education and the more as a parent is to make the atmosphere mm -hmm. the living atmosphere congenial for value inculcation congenial for positive attitude congenial for uh, mm -hmm. see healthy living congenial for democratic setup so that the people the children will observe and model and retain and sustain that type of okay. uh, behavior and uh, it is 
to sum up, we can understand that uh, the mechanism behind uh, value development is more of a manifestory type rather than on a verbalism in nature. And so let me stop by stating that values are thought rather than thought. So uh, this is for the time being related to the psychological mechanism behind uh, value development. Uh, thank you uh, very much. If you have uh, anything to contribute to me or any any supplement, addition, etc., uh, you can uh, see make it to me on uh, my mail ID N-U-S-T-H-A-F-A-E-D-N -E E-D-N Mustafa E-D-N at gmail.com and if you want to have any kind of uh, academic uh, liberation, academic sharing, see, I am open to all, uh, no issues, any kind of connection, any kind of uh, addition, any kind of contribution, everything is solicited. Thank you very much and uh, uh, kindly excuse me with the interference of this uh, uh, detail for the, for sometimes I excuse for uh, taking your uh, time without uh, see spoiling your time because of this technology. That this happen. Then thank you very much and I thank the HRDC of uh, Aligarh Muslim University for this opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir.